Hey, it's Dora Nerd. This is another dev vlog. Um, got another game jam project just finished off called Freak. So, um, sort of on a roll with these game jams in the minute. I just wanted to keep my or in the game dev. So, this is going to be an overview of uh, Freak, which is like a short, one level horror, atmospheric, strange survival game. Uh, I only made it over three days, so it's quite prototypical at the minute. But uh, I'll basically talk about how I created it, the thought process that went into each part of its creation and design. Uh, so it started off with a blank slate. Uh, it's the first person template, blank map. And basically, uh, first I was just... Um, I wanted just to create a terrain. So an interesting terrain, some hills, uh, some... That was basically it, really, just sculpting an Unreal Engine, some of the different hills and some different, trying to make an initial interesting environment uh, with the terrain sculpting editor. And I wanted to play around a bit with the um, sky, like I don't know, wanted to, which I eventually did get in a quite a way that I liked. Uh, so I'm doing here, just sort of looking at. Um, the sky and what I could do with that and this sort of I wanted to make the game very gloomy and sort of atmospheric so I've spent a lot of time tweaking the light settings um, and the uh, yeah so I just initially I made it with this sort of weird green light I uh, obviously still got the first person template there and that was just sort of me just trying to establish mood and trying to figure out exactly what sort of mood and what sort of setting the game would be in I wanted to just make it Design it sort of um, intuitively, so I wanted to. I didn't have a real solid idea in mind at first of what I was actually going to create before I created it. Uh, so I started trying to making some textures, some basic weird textures. I wanted to sort of. At first, I had the idea of making it sort of psychedelic horror game, even, which I guess in some ways it or it's turned out as. But uh, uh, yeah, initially I also had. A, Got rid of the gun, but I was going to try and keep the shooting aspect, which has been removed now. Um, long story short, just because I couldn't exactly figure out how to get it fully working in the time frame. Because this was a game jam, so I only had uh, uh, basically three days to four days to do it. Just my, And also in my evening time as well, I can't do it during the day. So, yeah, I was just creating these little textures and gear, which was rendering out like weird sort of like portal textures I guess in some respects or energy like sort of like with cube gen I wanted to create these weird sort of like uh, I guess almost psychedelic effects so this one I just created I used on the sort of surface there's like a water like surface you can walk on it but uh, I created that just as an additional interesting weird thing weird aspect of the landscape I suppose I did all that with GIMP, GNU Image Manipulation Program, free, it's like basically free Photoshop essentially. So that was that. And I started experimenting more with that and just sort of, of basically creating some sort of terrain texture, uh, some weird one. Didn't really work out though. I, I mean, I, this is at the early stages of the game, so I didn't really have a f clear idea of what I was going for in terms of the graphics and the overall mood. Uh, so the, at this point I was just trying to create some weird sort of like, I guess, um, just strange floor texture. Uh, that's all I was doing here basically. But I did eventually scrap this idea because I thought it just, uh, just looked a bit weird. just looked odd. It just didn't really work. Uh, I mean the texture was okay but... Just as a tiled thing, it looks very odd and strange. I don't think it gave the game any favours, I guess. Uh, and it just was spoiling the overall look of the game, I guess, basically. So this is what it looked like then. So it sort of started looking a bit cartoonish. Now, I wasn't sure if I actually wanted to go with that look. Uh, at this point, I was still a bit unsure if I wanted to go for a serious, gloomy, horror look or make it something... A bit absurd and 
uh, like I said, psychedelic and strange. I still wasn't exactly sure what I was doing. Um, I mean, a lot of the time with game signing, you only really find out where you're going when you're like, halfway through or something on a prototype anyway, in terms of the aesthetic and look of it. So, yeah, just more fiddling, probably delete this. Oh yeah, I was, so I was thinking about creating the enemy characters. Eventually I just I went with a completely different option. I did utilise this texture of the eyes, which is quite nice. I was sort of wanting to take it in a very surreal direction at this point. Sort of, uh, so created these eye textures based on some images I found online. And I was going to try and create, next I, wanted, I did want to create enemies, so basically I spent a lot of time, the majority of the actual working out programming was spent on enemies because uh, I've not really done proper enemy uh, pathfinding before and it took me a while to figure that out, like a few hours. Uh, at first I was just going to have cube enemies but I did eventually figure out a better way of implementing um, the enemy, the enemies in the game. This is just a bunch of like landscape work now I think. Like, uh, Working on the landscape, trying to make it a bit more interesting, adding bridges that you could cross. Uh, I mean, it's still a bit sparse, but yeah. And then also I added, like I was saying before, this liquid. Well, it's sort of liquid. It's not going really act as liquid, but I just added a plane. Probably not the best way of doing it, but uh, what can I say? I mean, I was doing this very fast. I've had a few days to do it, really. So just added a plane to a few different planes. Initially I was going to make it so that on overlap it would kill the player but I didn't get it working for some reason so I just scrapped that idea. But it gives this look, sort of weird look to the level because you've got these different sort of uh, almost tie-dye and like I said this is the initial look of the game where it's still quite simplified and psychedelic I suppose. Um, and I did eventually keep this but um, it was Sort of starting to look a bit more like an interesting environment now, I suppose, with that element added to it. Still a bit sparse, but starting to turn into something at least, I guess. Um, yeah. And so I was just. Um, I wanted to. I had this idea at this point of having monoliths being part of the game. It's an idea I eventually scrapped. My initial idea was to basically have it so that. The player would have to shoot enemies and something like shoot to five different monoliths to win. But I scrapped that idea because it's just in terms of implementing it in time, it probably wouldn't have worked, I guess. I potentially know a few ways to do it now, but uh, I was also looking into uh, obstacle challenges like jumping in between different, a broken bridge. So I was trying to figure out ways to make that a bit more interesting, I suppose. I mean, the game itself, as it is even finished, is still just like an extra sound, so. This was this was fun. I'd say you just use an app, online app called Beatbox um, to just it's like a tracking uh, online app, and you just it's really easy to get. You got like a presets um, instruments. You can tweak them a bit as well. So I did that. I wanted to uh, create like a sort of some sort of soundtrack which it, I think in a lot of ways really helped inform the tone of the game actually when I went forward. Uh, the inspiration for the sound was I wanted to create something similar to the Fallout soundtrack, uh, the original Fallout, which is sort of an ambient, uh, well very influenced by selected ambient works if the internet's to be believed actually by Apex Twin, so sort of weird ambient music, like dark ambient. At this point it doesn't really sound like dark ambient but uh, ambient. But um, that was sort of the mood I was going for. Uh, it doesn't sound like it now, because I'd basically you'll see why in a minute. But uh, so I was just experimenting with sounds, trying to establish a mood. Uh, beatbox is good for just sketching things out like that. It's really good for that. Uh, you can get something that sounds half decent up in about 10 minutes. I think it's only took about 5 or 8 minutes to get something together. So it's just establishing the initial pattern and melody. Like I said, I wanted to create something in the vein of Fallout 1 soundtrack, so that sounded works for 1 and 2 by Apex Twin. 
So you know, just sort of repetitive droning noises and a sort of percussive underpinning, I suppose. So, once I completed the track, you can pour it into the Audacity, uh, but I wanted to pitch it down a bit, uh, change the, make it a bit slower, because I think the maximum, minimum eight, uh, beats per inch you can do on the app is 88, and I wanted to make it very, like, like I said, like Fallout 1 journey style, so I eventually ended up with uh, the sound, which is sort of similar to the Fallout 1 soundtrack in some sense, spooky, slow, ambient journey dark ambient sound so I saved that and took a listen to it and I think next very much informed by this sort of shift in tonality uh, from the soundtrack design I uh, basically the the look of the app started to change so I made everything darker I wanted to just try and start using light a bit in a bit more of an intelligent way, so I dimmed all the lights down, started using uh, point lights just to create a mood in some sense, uh, so made it more moody basically, and made it a darker game. So this is where I sort of made the decision to make it a horror game, I guess, basically. Um, and I wanted to think next about uh, what the enemy could have, I'd sort of left that in some sense. Uh, messed around with the skybox a bit as well, made the clouds move a bit faster, which was quite cool. And so I thought it's like a nice twirling effect, to give it this whole expression of feeling in some respects the environment, which is something I was like, which I liked. I'm a big fan of expressionism. So, yeah, so looking around the environment. Feel for what it was turning into, I suppose. So I found these models on a, I just downloaded them from Mixamo. Uh, if I probably had longer, I probably would have created my own model, but um, I just found these weird, like almost like weird looking clowns in Mixamo. So I downloaded that, some animations for running and uh, dying. So that sort of, this is the point I decided to change the gameplay, just make it a sort of chasing game. So I implemented the script for the clowns, as it were, the freaks ch chase you. Still had the bullet with the particle effect with explosions running, but I was sort of already made the decision to get rid of that. Uh, and then I thought, obviously, there has to be a loop where these enemies, if they catch you, can kill you. So I decided at this point in the 
sort of it'd be more like a zombie chase game, I guess, or something like that. Uh, I also experimented a little bit with having this flickering light underneath above the character, sorry, and um, well, I did eventually scrap this, but uh, I was playing around with that because uh, sort of just trying to figure out ways of establishing atmosphere in the level and sort of making it more spooky, for want of a better word. Uh, I think it probably maybe in the future I might uh, add to that and make, make that, add that feature again, but it seems to be, it was working, but yeah, so it sort of looked like this with sort of flickering effect, I guess, strobing. It looks a bit unnatural probably, but I just had a sort of a brain wave for it, so decided to try it out. Uh, at this point I've still got the gun part of bullet pro projectiles shooting. Uh, which I eventually got rid of later. And yeah, he's just chasing me around. But, uh, so he's good. there's a blueprint for this. So basically, he uses... I was I did an experiment with blackboard and behaviour trees at first, but I had some trouble getting it to work. So I eventually fell back to uh, porn sensing method and then uh, on detection of player... Uh, basically follow the player, which in this example sort of works okay. It's basically does what it says on the tin. So, um, it's a bit more of environment design, sort of wanted to tweak it a bit more. Lit, put the light up a bit, it was a bit too dark before. Added these crosses, which I thought was quite, obviously it's a horror movie staple, these crosses, but I thought it would be quite cool just to add that to give it some spooky, uh, creepy atmosphere. Uh, with this pyramid thing, some of the, Probably some of the environment could be improved a little bit, but I just wanted to add a few more little features to the environment. So I did like an apartment block, this little pyramid, uh, the exit, which is that blue portal thing there. Some lighting was added too, to the sort of faux water, psychedelic water areas. And sort of the look of the game is established at this point. So basically now I just started uh, finalizing the game loops like main menu having a main menu and start and exit having an escape key that works that goes takes you back to the main menu and obviously having the end of game loop so that closes the loop of the game so it actually gives you gameplay I changed the skybox as well so I made it green which is quite I quite like that and I made it a bit faster so again trying to draw on the expressionism thing and Basically, after I'd done all that, that was sort of the uh, most of the game built for this prototype for the jam. Uh, so I'll just show the actual um, game next, I think. <laughs> 